Eventually, ESPN hot takes get old. I want Iguodala. Especially when they compare young, unproven guys to all timers. How about this for a comparison with Andrew Wiggins? The next Kobe Bryant. So when ESPN started saying things like this. And I'm sorry, he reminds me of Michael Jeffrey Jordan. We all just rolled our eyes. But the thing is, it wasn't just media heads looking for clicks that were saying this. Everyone was on board. He like a young 84 Jordan, boy. You hear me? You going? You got a chance, brother, to be Michael Jordan, bro. Just wait until you hear what Michael Jordan himself had to say about the young star. Because for years, everyone has been looking for the Jordan replacement. He was the icon who transcended the sport, whether you loved him or hated him. Kobe did his best Jordan impersonation, but instead he was just a less efficient carbon copy with one less ring. But at least it was close. The two looked the same, and since Kobe retired, the league has been searching for the replacement. But are Kobe and MJ the last of a dying breed? Anthony Edwards has proven that is not true, and that is why everyone calls him Michael Jordan's son. It's more than the fact that they just look the same. Seriously, is Edwards only a couple years away from shaving his head to complete the look? Even on the court, they are mirrors of each other. Edwards has clearly done his homework, knowing exactly how to put that athleticism to good use. It's not like Jordan invented the spinning fade or the high reaching dunk. He himself was the next version of David Thompson. Jordan is by all measures the prototypical shooting guard. He generally played off ball, cutting and dashing to the basket in constant motion to get himself open by using that athleticism and ruthlessness in attacking the hoop. If you leave him open, he'll burn you. If he needs to initiate the offense, he would, just like Anthony Edwards. But there are a lot of shooting guards who have done that over the years. Sure, none of them look like Jordan's son, but why did we never call Devin Booker the next Jordan? He did all of the same things on offense. Right, but there's another side of the ball to worry about. Who are your top three defensive shooting guards of all time? It's probably Jordan, Sidney Moncrief, and Kobe Bryant. So Jordan and his carbon copy are the top three. Now who's the best defensive shooting guard right now, at least among superstars? Edwards might earn the fame from the high flying dunks and the offensive firepower, but it's the defense that really sets him apart. Remember, Jordan was the 1988 Defensive Player of the Year. If you're gonna call yourself the next MJ, you've gotta earn it on both sides. Although, Edwards has never called himself the next Michael Jordan. You're drawing a lot of comparisons to Michael. Mm. Do you want them to stop? Yeah, for sure. They need to stop. If you don't want to be compared to Michael Jordan, how do you want to be talked about? Who does Anthony Edwards remind himself of? Is he the next Kobe, the next Wade? Is he going all the way back and calling himself the next David Thompson? Yeah, like the first Anthony Edwards, not the next Michael Jordan. I want people to be like, this Anthony Edwards kid, he got his own style. He's not the next Jordan, he is the first Anthony Edwards. So why does he keep getting these comparisons? Well, just look at their trajectory so far and you'll understand. In Jordan's second season, he played 18 games after breaking his left foot. But when the playoffs came around, he dropped 43.7 points per game, including a 63 piece on the greatest front court of all time, the 86 Celtics. That wasn't Jordan, Bird said. That was God disguised as Michael Jordan. Sure, the Bulls lost in three, but that was Jordan's ascension. Now, Edwards dropping 32 a game on the 2023 Nuggets isn't quite God level, but that was the moment we realized whatever potential Ant had was about to be fulfilled. And when he beat the Nuggets in game seven on their own home floor, that was the moment. He beat this generation's bird. It's only right we call him this generation's MJ. Throughout his playoff run, we saw another reason why Edwards gets the MJ comp. Just wait until you hear what MJ himself had to say about it. We saw Edwards getting in Kevin Durant's face, hollering and screaming at last generation superstar. We saw him waving the Nuggets crowd home, but most importantly, we saw the shrug. In that moment, that could have been MJ. Above all, the timing was perfect. When Michael Jordan took the torch as the league's best and most popular player, 
it was at a crossroads for the NBA. Magic and Bird saved the league, along with David Stern, in the early 80s, but Bird's back couldn't hold up, and Magic was diagnosed with HIV, cutting short two iconic careers. The league needed a face only a decade after tape delays and empty arenas. Who was it gonna be, Carl Malone? Whether it was the swagger or just the sheer skill, the world fell in love with Jordan, particularly at the 1992 Olympics. Magic himself said that's when Jordan became the face of the league. Larry and I just sitting there having a Coke or whatever. And he says, guys, and he put his hands on my shoulder, put his hands on Larry's shoulder and said, guys, there's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> so he was like, oh man, <laughs> what could we say? He said, you know what, you're right. <laughs> Edwards came into a league with three aging superstars, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and LeBron. No one is denying they're still great, but nobody's calling them top five players either. That title belongs to Jokic, Embiid, Giannis, Luka, and SGA, five international players. Now, non-American players dominating the league is great. We've truly been a global sport over these last five years like no other time historically. But it's also become clear that the league wants an American-born player to showcase, especially when Olympic time rolls around. It's not gonna be Jason Tatum. Booker lost whatever chance he had at it. Zion can't stay on the court. For a second, it was John Morant, but look how that turned out. Edwards was the guy on FIBA team last year. Just ask Tyrese Halliburton. The ant is amazing. Like the stuff that he does on the floor is ridiculous. Like that first game against Germany where he just took over the whole second half, that was like the greatest performance I've ever seen in person. I was like, bro, you look like it's like the beam right now. I think Ant is, you know, probably the best player in his position, uh future of the league for sure. Tyrese might not be magic. But doesn't that sound like what we heard about Jordan during the 1992 Olympics? This summer is gonna be a huge test of what Edwards has got. Will he be the alpha on a team with aging vets? Is this his dream team moment? He still has a few things to prove. He ran out of gas in the conference finals, something that doesn't happen to vets who have been around the block. He still has a bit to prove as a playmaker, especially as Mike Conley gets older. But just based off the timeline, Ant isn't far off from Jordan. In Jordan's fourth season, which Ant just wrapped up, he won MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. But he was 24. Ant played one year in college and has just turned 22. When MJ was 22, he had zero playoff wins, let alone a conference finals appearance. He's going to need a title or two before we can really start dialing up these MJ comps. But the man himself said it's not too soon. Stylistically, well, I reached out to the GOAT today, oh, Michael Jordan. And what a good Jordan drop. said there are similarities in their games. He agreed. Oh. So it, Jordan said there's similarities. There's similarities, all right? Is Edwards the next Michael Jordan? Is it too soon or is he on the right track? Do you think he can bring many a title by next year? Let us know in the comments, then watch one of these videos next. Listen to the wrong opinion, useless NBA trivia, and garbage rankings for more NBA content.